So I uh, decided to record this. Why? I don't know. Just something to do. And let me go ahead and, and press play while it's happening. What I wanted to show slash see uh, are the, 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 the differences in the amount of time required in order to update a Samsung Galaxy S23, which is what I happen to have, and a Pixel 7. And the reason that I even decided to do this is months ago, literally months ago, I, I read an article saying Google was talking about wanting to update or, or speed up the, the time it takes to, uh, to install their updates. And I, I should have said it while I was on the screen, but just previously what we saw was the update for the Galaxy S23, the August security update, the, the, the size of the files was, uh, what, I think 1.2 gigabytes. So not a small file. And it downloaded relatively quickly. I mean, heck, we are only a minute into the recording and it, it's finished downloading you know, prior to that. So pretty, pretty fast download times. And we're you know, restarting the phone right now. And one thing that I noticed, which makes sense, and I know I've said it in some other video at some point in time complaining about this fact, is that Google, for some reason, doesn't do it this way. What's happened is the update was downloaded. And in order to install it, we are in this pre-boot, pre-boot, not phase, but pre-boot uh, environment. There we go. This pre-boot environment. And it allows things like this to happen more quickly because it's not also trying to simultaneously run a full operating system and do all the stuff that the user may want to do with the phone. In my opinion, it's way better to say, hey, user, sorry, you can't use your phone for a few minutes. Or, and I think on the screen, we were given the option to pretend uh, to potentially install it during a, a time where we wouldn't be using the phone, maybe late at night or you know, super early in the morning or something. So it, it wouldn't affect the user experience. But we are, what, 36 going on to 37, 37? Okay, well, it'll jump up to 37 and, and, and so on in a couple moments. But it just makes sense. There it is. And what this hap what, what allows this to happen, or what uh, what is allowed to happen, is this overall download installation time frame is way faster. Okay? And we do it with the Galaxy. We do it with your Windows mach machines. You do it with your MacBooks. You do it with your iPhones. Um... I feel like even with my Zen phone, you know, those updates are usually relatively light. The Sony updates, they take a long time as well for, for the Xperia phones. They take a decent amount of time as well. And I, I think they're kind of doing the same thing where let's allow the user to continue using the phone while we do all the stuff in the background. Instead of just saying, hey, we're going to download everything. We're going to restart the phone. We're going to install everything and then load the operating system and you'll be good to go. And you might be thinking right now, oh, this is, you know, kind of taking a long time. I mean, yeah, you know, we're, what, three and a half minutes minutes into this video. And yeah, we're 50% done with the installation process. So that's really not that much time. And I, you know, don't want to say that this is a precursor to how long the Pixel uh, is going to take to install the update. But if you can see how much time is left on this video, you can probably imagine that it's, it's going to be a while. <laughs> because it just doesn't make sense. So while the, the Galaxy is still on the screen, I probably at some point should do a full-blown review of the phone itself, but I think this might be a pretty good time to do it. I, I did a real half-assed S22 review a couple months ago, and every time I do one, it is months after the phone has come out, and plenty of people have already done reviews, and honestly, I didn't particularly care too much for that phone. I didn't So much so that I, I didn't plan on actually buying this phone. But it was available, you know, on eBay. And, and I think, well, I know what happened is I saw it at a really good price. Somebody was like, hey, I guess they just wanted to get rid of it. And I saw it, buy now, paid for it, good to go. And I waited, I think, a day or two, you know, because no movement had, had, had gone by in terms of uh, it shipping or, or whatever. And I contacted them and, and she let me know, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, I... I have to cancel the order. You know, I was getting rid of this phone because I plan on getting another phone. 
but this phone that I now have is defective, so I have to keep using my old phone, and it's going to take weeks. Okay, whatever. And then I, I mean, I, I, I did say, all right, well, uh, please let me know when you put this phone back on the market because the price was just, it was too good to, to be true. And I guess <laughs> seeing as what happened, it, it, it was too good to be true. All right, there we go. Optimizing apps. So I wanted to point this out because we'll see it on the, uh, the, 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 the next update for the other phone. And yeah, this is something else that needs to go on while we are not using the apps. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. What exactly is happening while the apps are optimizing? I don't know. But I don't need to be using them while the phone is trying to optimize them. And see how quickly that was? Boom, we're at 100% already for optimizing the apps. And we are at 5 minutes and 47 seconds in. Phone is, is back booted. All right, Wi-Fi is kicked on. Let's go ahead and swipe up. Okay, let me... Uh, I, you know, I'm a little passcode. All right, now we're in. Okay, and there's always just a little more that needs to be done. Okay, let's swipe down. Boom, finishing system update. Okay, I know, still going, still going. But anyway, so that seller, you know, g gave me all my money back and there were no issues. Boom, we're done. We are, are six minutes and 17 seconds in. We get that little update notification right there. We're done. A little over six, six minutes. All right, that's a perfectly acceptable amount of time to download a 1.2 gigabyte file size, install all of the updates, optimize the, the, the apps, and reload the operating system. Okay, with the, the Pixel 7, which, 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 was, which is what, what's on the screen right now, we'll see what's happening. And this is going to take a while, so I'm going to go back to talking about the Galaxy. So, got my money back. And then I saw this one available later on, um, paid for it, got it, got a case for it, originally went to Best Buy to get the case. And here's what's happening, and, and it's so unfortunate, but the Insignia case, which is, well, the Insignia brand, I should say, is, um, I mean, it's fine. You know, for, for non-electronics, I think I'm okay with buying Insignia brand branded products. Uh, but the case was 20 bucks, and I was like, this case ain't worth 20 bucks. You know, it's not. Like, especially with right now, at, well, at that particular time, um, this, this the, the the official Galaxy S23 case was, I think, like $22 or $23. So it's like, all right, you guys are just squeezing us from the bottom in terms of, of making us pay for this stuff because we're either going to order something online, which a lot of us do, or if we come to your store, yeah, we can see the Galaxy price, but if the Insignia price was, you know, $10, then we definitely buy that. But you know that, all right, well, let's just bump it up 20 because it's still less than the Galaxy case. Pause on that. All right, right now, we are downloading a size that is 21 megabytes, okay? A small, small, small fraction of the size of the file that was downloaded for the, the Galaxy update. And I think, what, we were at three minutes? No, we were halfway through the installation at three minutes. So it was maybe a minute, I think it was a little over a minute where... For, for downloading that entire file. And here we are right now, and see it says downloading and installing update. So I assume the update has been downloaded and now it's installing. But what sucks is, yeah, we are still doing this while the phone is operational. So if I wanted to, I could swipe up and continue using the phone, which Google probably thinks that's what the user wants, which I'm not gonna say it's a bad thing, but I feel like it would be a lot to give the user the option to, oh, which one do you want to do? Do you want to download it? Like, but at the same time, it's just like, well, just don't give us the choice. Like all the other <laughs> environments where we're downloading and installing updates, just don't give us the choice. And just do it, download it, reboot the phone, preboot, execute, uh, preboot environment, install everything, bring the operating system back up. So we are at nine minutes in, which means we're three minutes into this installation. And we, you know, haven't haven't really done much <laughs> haven't done much okay so that's going to be on the screen for a, a little while all right so but back to the galaxy so yeah so in my mind even though i had purchased the case it wasn't worth 20 bucks like i bought it came home used it saw something on amazon asked my brother to order it it came for i don't know seven dollars or something so i took that case back and you know some might be saying oh you're buying stuff return whatever i mean it's it's common practice one not that i have to defend myself but two, I don't, yeah, I, I, as I mentioned a few moments ago, they are squeezing us because they know that, yeah, even if it's just a dollar cheaper, 
than the Samsung case. There's a chance that we'd buy their case, but they it should just already be cheaper. It should be like 10 bucks. Ten dollar case, I'm cool with that. There's nothing special about this clear TPU case that I, I got off of Amazon, nor was the one that I got from Best Buy Special. But yeah, it's just a standard clear case, and you can see right through me. In fact, if I put it right back, yeah, you can't even really tell that. I mean, there's a little bit of a glare, but yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, this is. I mean, it's five. It's it's a nickel's worth of material. I'd be okay paying between five and ten dollars for this, which is what I ended up doing through Amazon, which I don't like buying on Amazon, which is why my brother has the account and I don't, but I'm still giving money th to them through him, so whatever. But what I don't like, or since we're talking about cases, or since I'm talking about cases, and look, that thing's almost finished, is I used to be able to go to Walmart, and I'm sure at one point in time there were just a bunch of options, but let, let's just go back to the Galaxy iPhone era, so whether it's an A series or an S series, and then the last, let's say, three or four iPhones that have been released, um, you would you would be able to find something in Walmart. Pause on that. All right, we have switched over to optimizing your device. What does that mean? I don't know, but I can tell you, it would be easier and faster to optimize my device while I am not using it, and it even lets you know this may take a while. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot for letting me know that it might take a while. <laughs> Unbelievable. But I, yeah, like maybe that's something I need to, I'm sure people have told them that there's no reason for me to be seeing this. Like yeah, let all this happen while I'm not using the phone. What are we at? We're at 11 minutes into the recording. All right. So, um, so where was it? Okay. So yeah, talk about cases. My brother has a thing. I don't, but oh yeah. So you used to be able to go to Walmart, bunch of galaxies, bunch of iPhones. And yeah, I know there are plenty of other Android devices that aren't Galaxy, but we got to the point where that's really all that was really selling in this country. And you could go get whatever you want and be good. Now, I know, I think the first t time I really paid attention was when I went to go get a case for my iPhone 12 mini. And I know I'm talking about you know, Galaxy here and now I'm referencing an iPhone, but that Galaxy case, Sorry, that iPhone case, I spent $5 on it, and that was perfect. And I was like, all right, I just need something to improve the grip on these slippery little little buggers. And that's it. I mean, a little bit of protection, but for the most part, I'm pretty good about not dropping my phone. So I didn't need, you know, anything that was super expensive. I didn't need the, the $50 case, you know, tested for, you know, 500 foot drop or something. But no, I, 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 I didn't need any of that stuff. So, so back then, that was, what, two years ago now? Maybe three years, two and a half, I guess, maybe. And, um, yeah, like, and, and when I went to go look for a phone case, I was like, all right, I should be able to find that. And for the Galaxy, yeah, I didn't at Walmart. I mean, they had some stuff there, but I was like, I'm not paying 20 bucks, even though I went to go pay $20 later. But, I was, I, I, and, but it was $20 for something I didn't want. Um so all that to say, it, it sucks that we've really started consolidating in these stores in terms of what's available. And yes, the internet allows us to do and buy and see almost whatever we want to. Uh, but it would have been nice to just go to the store, pick up a $5 case, and go on about my day. And I promise you, if that case had been available for $5 at Walmart or Best Buy, I'm sorry about that, I don't know if you just heard that, I just hit my hand on the desk. But for $5, I would have bought it, kept it, not worried about returning it. Because for $5, you can only expect so much. But for that $5 I spent on that iPhone 12 mini case, I was more than satisfied. Um, speaking of $5 cases, I would go get it. But my iPhone SC2 case is over there, and I spent $4 on that. And yeah, for $4, I can't be upset about it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it at, you know, at all. But for $4, if there was something slightly wrong with it, then I'd be like, mm, I only paid $4 for it. But like I said, I'm fully satisfied with it, so I can't be upset about it at all. <laughs> so, um, so that's that. All right. And hold on one second. Let me see. Can I? Yeah, you see my mouse right there. Let me come down here. Um, last time I was doing this, I think, yeah, I was screen recording and somebody called and I think it just jacked up the whole thing. So I just put it on do not disturb. So, um. So yeah, so got a case on it and I, I used it for a little bit because 
what I want it to do is get something. Hey, why, why did I buy this? I don't even remember. I think I just saw it at a reasonable price. And I said, ooh, I need to give it a try. Maybe I'll like it more than I like, I like the last one. But I did start using it. I know what it was. As you all know, which it's over there, I've been using the Zenfone 9 for almost a year now. I think I got it last September. And the one thing that I noticed, especially when I got here to Georgia, is that driving through certain places, the cell reception was absolutely terrible. And I started dropping a lot of calls. And I chalked it up to, uh, because that phone wasn't, or the firmware on the phone wasn't, designed or meant to be used in this location i mean it works but it wasn't it's not the u.s version of the phone there were some places where yeah the call quality and call accessibility just just is not existent so i'd be driving up and down the main road and i know for them for the most part all right between these two places if i'm on the phone either a the call is going to drop or b i'll stay connected but one of us won't be able to hear the other <laughs> and then you know if, if i'm going fast enough maybe i'll get through that, that, that area relatively quickly and then the call will pick back up. Uh, but I was looking for something that was made to be used in this country. And yes, I probably at this point could find the Zenfone 9 that is um, used or that was made for the United States. But I said, well, I already own this one. So I don't want to buy another one. Like I just don't want to do it. Like I'm not buying the exact same phone. I mean, again, I could have, but no, nah, I didn't want to. So, yeah, that's why I bought this. And in terms of support and stuff like that, you know, Samsung with their, I think, four and four. So four years of operating system updates and four years of security updates, I believe. So knowing that, I was like, hey, that's a good idea. Now, now I got to be truthful. I mean, you know, anybody who knows me knows I probably get two to three phones a year. So having a phone for two or three years probably isn't going to happen. So should I really be that concerned about the, the Galaxy S23 being supported in what, 2026 or 2027? No, I mean, this phone will probably be long gone by then. I mean, if uh, if the trade-in deals for the Pixel 8 are good, we'll see what happens between, you know, my Galaxy S23 and my Pixel 7. I mean, it would make the most sense to trade in the Pixel 7 for the Pixel 8 so that way I don't have a Pixel 7 and Pixel 8 in my possession. But, I mean, last year when I traded in that uh, S22 for a Pixel 7, I think, you know, Best Buy screwed some stuff up. But had everything gone according to plan, I would have spent like 80 bucks on that phone or something. You know, like something super cheap. Uh, whereas the, trading a Pixel 6 for a Pixel 7, it wasn't quite as much that, that Best Buy gave. So we'll see what those trading deals are looking like, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Uh, but... Uh, after I did get the phone, I put my, my, my SIM card in it. And yeah, drive as I expected when I was driving through those particular locations, it was evident that the calls were not dropping and I was able to constantly hear the person. And in fact, I remember the first time that I drove through that area with this phone, with this Galaxy, I was like, okay, is the person going to drop? And I started driving, I was driving and I, I could keep hearing, like, I kept talking. So I was like, okay, cool. Now I know the problem is the Zen phone. And yeah, and I've looked online for firmware updates and not updates, but I guess ways to flash the entire US ROM onto the phone. Uh, one of my very first videos for the Zen Phone 9, uh, I talked about um, one of the, the, the software updates or firmware updates said that it now supported T-Mobile Voice over LTE, which you know, great. And, and I can imagine that it probably was an improved experience compared to how things were prior to that, that firmware update. Uh, and, and like I've said, when I was living someplace else, I didn't have the, the, the call drop issues. But here, things for some reason are just different, you know, so I can only do so much. So I used the phone for a little while and it was fine. I mean, uh, one of the major complaints I have about this phone like last year's phone is that even though this year they've claimed that the efficiency of the s22 the qualcomm snapdragon s <laughs> nope the qualcomm snapdragon 8 gen 2 for galaxy is more efficient um i still feel like the battery life on these things are terrible i mean i don't know what all is happening in the background 
but a lot of something something is happening in the background and that battery just gets, gets eaten up like if you're using the phone to do anything that battery just gets eaten up i mean sitting there idly yeah it's fine i mean i can go a, a day or two right now two maybe three days between charges if i'm not using it for anything except for maybe a couple of youtube videos a day but yeah the moment i start using it no nah, it's a wrap now one thing i will say and this is a, a, a good pro for the phone is that even though the battery life for me sucks charge times are great if i'm using anything that has any type of oomph to it um yeah it charges pretty fast so i can't i'm like all right i'll use the phone and then all right i need to go do something that and i get off the phone charge it and boom i'm good to go now i will say what is evident and true and sucks is that the good thing is i've started using whoop, can't pull that out right now uh headphones with the little USB-C dongle so that way I could plug them into the bottom of the phone and talk wired but if I'm talking wired then I can't charge the phone uh, I'm sure this thing has wireless charging wireless charging but I do not have a wireless charging coil <laughs> or charging pad excuse me so I, I can't do that nor do I want to so if I'm talking on the phone I can't be charging it if I'm charging it I can talk on the phone but I then use speakerphone, which is usually fine if I'm, you know, up here by myself. But I still prefer the wired connection for both. So I can only do one at a time, which, again, charge, charge speeds are good. So I don't think I really have too many complaints when it comes to that. Um, I guess one thing I could point out, which is really good, is the fact that the optical under display fingerprint reader is really good i mean it is blazing fast i mean i mean boom i mean like yeah you can see it's on the screen right there and i just tap it and it's i mean it's unlocked and to show that it's not just some type of false something i have not registered my middle finger so when i use a middle you know a finger that hasn't been registered it doesn't work but my thumb boom so that thing is great and on the Pixel 7, that thing's, I mean, it's still using what? No, so I think this is an ultrasonic one. And I think this is on the Pixel 7, an optical, like, it's, again, it took me three tries to unlock it right there. That thing sucks. And as far as I am concerned, Google needs to just swap over and start using the ultrasonic one or needs to go back to a hardware one and put that thing back on the back of the phone because I thoroughly enjoy using the one on my Pixel 2, which is over there. Or, which I know technically face unlock is a thing because I have it set up and, and it works. I mean, well, I just said I can't recognize my face maybe because I have glasses on. Okay, no, it worked that time. But I do have a Pixel 4 over there and that thing was good. I, I enjoyed Project Solely or whatever. So that's what they should get back to. But we'll see if that ever happens. I mean, yeah, Google just kills off everything. But we're not going to talk about that yet. Okay, so battery life is eh, charge times are good. Under display fingerprint reader, I think is great. The speakers are fine. Physical SIM, eSIM, security updates are good, are great actually by Android and standards. I mean, you can't compete with the iPhone quite yet. So if they ever get to five or six years, you know, then like, all right, they're definitely on par with Apple. But uh, four years is, is perfectly fine. And um, no headphone jack, unfortunately. Physical SIM, eSIM, I said that. Um, one thing I do like, which this is, isn't necessarily just Samsung, but it's the community, is I, I get the phone and it is locked to T-Mobile's network. Cool. And that's fine. Uh, but I can go online and download, I think the program is called Odin, and I can flash a different version of One UI for this phone. So instead of the T-Mobile branded one, it's just the generic US one. So that way I don't have all the pre-installed apps. When I restart the phone, I don't get that, oh, T-Mobile, you know, all that, all that stuff. So um, so I, I do like that. In fact, one thing I just saw right there is in order to restart the phone, if, I, if the phone was locked, you still need to enter your PIN or uh, use biometrics. So I, I do like that. Uh, cameras are good, as expected. Um, yeah. And, I, and, you know, call quality, all that's fine. I mean, with one UI, you just get a ton of options in there. So settings galore. If you want to go in there and mess around with a bunch of stuff, by all means, uh, have at it. 
So I think I've talked enough about the Galaxy S23. And, you know, you might think maybe I just, this, this is a still picture, but the little progress bar did just move. So no, this is a, a video of what's going on when it comes to trying to install uh, an update on a Pixel 7. So uh, back to talking about the Pixel 7. All right, so just unlocked it right there. And what can I say about this thing? Face ID or face unlock can't recognize face. Use fingerprint instead. All right, now I got into my pen. So the whole unlock thing is just a nightmare compared to what's happening here on this Galaxy. All right, or, and, and, it, and I'm not praising Samsung, you know, uniquely or, or unilaterally, but there are other hardware implementations of fingerprint readers which work just fine, like my Zenfone, which works just fine. In fact, since this is taking forever, hold on, I'll, I'll be right back. All right, so in fact, we got two hardware options right here. So yeah, we got the Zenfone 9, which, let me just do that. So, and I've, I've done videos on this before, but boom, it's locked right now. Where's the camera? Unlocked. All right, let me lock it so it's locked, and I just lit the screen, unlocked. You know, and that's just a hardware implementation of it. You don't need fancy stuff. And if you're going to go with that in-display stuff, don't half-ass it the way that Google did. Samsung, again, is great. And here we go. Let me, uh, is this stuff still going to be there? No, I just want to add some, not add some notifications on the screen, so let me lock it again. So iPhone, it is locked. Boom. Try again. Okay, but now it's unlocked. So pretty, still pretty good. So yeah, Google, yeah, don't, don't half-ass it, but you can expect less from them. They will come up with something implement it terribly and then drop it or start working on something else while still simultaneously working on this previous project and who knows what, what time is it right now okay so uh so yeah that's not a not a great experience the cameras are great you know that's kind of what we've come to to appreciate when it comes to these these pixels cameras are good supported i think is three years of of operating system updates and five years of security updates. So that's good. And I guess one is upgrades and one is updates. So uh, whatever is whatever. It's a pretty, I guess, stock version of Android. But I will say that the Zen phone also has a pretty close to stock version of Android. And I do enjoy the Zen phone's version of stock Android better than the Pixels, which is interesting to say, because I guess it's stock. I think mean, Asus did a little more um, to it which is, you know, perfectly fine. And um, and that's good. Uh, one thing I did complain about a while ago when I did, like I think my, my first 24 hours with the Pixel is that when watching videos and I have it in landscape mode like this, the audio quality, like quality was fine, but it felt like it wasn't balanced. And then when I did watch a video in landscape like this, or sorry, portrait like this, um, it seemed like the, the video was balanced again. I mean, you know, so... I don't know, is there something in there? Is there something wrong with my ears? Are they tuning it for more uh, portrait video? I mean, TikToks and all the shorts and all that stuff. So I have no idea. And again, I might just be making something up. Like my head might just be like, it's fine, but I'm gonna say something's wrong. So I don't know. A battery life is fine. I used it as my main phone for a little while, but seeing as this is a year old now, this was back when I, what was I using at the time? I think I had my Pixel Buds. So I was talking some on Bluetooth. I had purchased that Apple USB-C to three and a half millimeter dongle, but it doesn't work as well with non-Apple products. So I think people are having issues talking to me on it. Um, but you know, holding it like this, I did probably three or four times, <laughs> not often. Speakerphone was fine and yeah. That's it. Uh, oh, and here's one thing that I know I know I've complained about. And it, oh, 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 I was talking about dropping phones earlier. One thing that I know um, I mentioned in my review of the phone is button placement. And it, it might be stupid. In fact, you know, let me, I'm, I'm going to hold three phones right here. And the iPhone does it differently, so we're going to just leave that one over there. But if we could, 
which I don't know if you'll be able to see it because you probably won't. But in terms of button placement, in my opinion, when you are operating these phones, you are more likely, and I'm just going to put them down, you are more likely to press the power button than you are to press the volume buttons. And on the Zen phone and on the Galaxy, you have the, the power button beneath the two volume buttons. And to me, that makes sense. Now, it's different with the Zen phone because the fingerprint reader is also embedded into the power button. But in terms of just button placement and overall usage, it makes sense that, hey, I might, like when you're holding the phone, your, your thumb kind of naturally lands there as opposed to having to come up here and hold the phone in some type of oblong way. So button placement makes sense because when I come to my Pixel 7, my fingers are right on the volume buttons, which isn't good in my opinion. I need to reach a little higher to actually reach the power button. Which, yeah, like I said, might be stupid and, and non-consequential for you, but um, I think I, I was probably one of the things I got tired of. Now, if you're holding it, you know, in your, in your other hand, your index finger is right there, you know, it might not be a bad gig. I will say that with all the phones, if you have some type of raise to wake on, you don't really need to press the power button to do much of anything, you know. If you long press the power button for one of the virtual assistants, you also have the option to, you know, swipe up from the screen. Let's see if I can do that on this phone. I might have, I, I probably turned it off. Nope, yep, so swiping up from the screen. I don't know what that was. Yeah, so I, I might have turned it off. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm just trying to think of reasons why putting the volume buttons in a more suitable place over the power button is something that a manu device manufacturer would do. So, I don't know. But even in the iPhone, does a different too, where the power button is on one side and the volume is on. And, and that might even be a better implementation of it, where you have the power button over here and just the index finger by itself and then the volume buttons down here. And when I'm watching video... I got the power button up top, and of course I got the volume buttons down down bottom. So, so yeah, they they all three of them, well, all four of them. There's three different implement, implementations uh, across the the four different devices. Uh, so it is what it is. Um, I, oh, screen size. So six point three inches, I believe, and the Pixel Seven Pro is bigger, and the Pixel Seven A is smaller. <laughs> That's the, the the most I can remember off top. I think the 7a is 6.1 and the pixel 7 pro 6.7 maybe I, I mean too big for me so I, I i don't know it looks like the pixel 8 might go down to 6.1 inches i mean that would be interesting if it did 6.1 and then if it if if that happened then i would wonder what the 8a would be so pixel 8 6.1 8a don't know you know uh, going kind of off topic, but still kind of suitable. The Sony Xperia 1 is the big phone. Boom, whatever. Then you have the Xperia 5, and then you have the Xperia 10. And for a while, the Xperia 5 was a tenth of an inch bigger than the Xperia 10. But this year, because one was 6.1 and one was 6 inches, but this year the Xperia 10 is now 6.1, so is the Xperia 5 going to still be 6.1? I don't know. Uh, I will say what's interesting, and this is where things I think are starting to convulge, or sorry, converge, is the iPhone and the Galaxy, the base, you know, so the iPhone 14 and the 14 Pro and the Galaxy S23 are all 6.1 inches. So I can imagine that's where the industry is going. Of, okay, we don't need to differentiate our phones that much. We can at least have the same screen size and, the overall experience that you get using the phone is what changes, not the, the physical dimension of, of the phone. So, um, so, 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 yeah, I don't know, and and that that would make sense now that I'm thinking about it. Oh yeah, maybe the Pixel will get smaller as a result of it just wanting to look like the other phones on the market. If this phone were 6.1 inches, maybe I would have kept using it for a little bit longer. I mean, yeah, just it's not. I mean, it's not a massive difference, but you can see like they're both, you know flat in my hand right here and there's you know some height difference and some width difference as well um i honestly think i'm running out of stuff to talk about in terms of these phones um yeah we are at 34 minutes 
I think something happens at 36. Don't quote me, but I think something happens at 36. <laughs> so we got th just hit 35. Cool. Um, I am looking forward to the Pixel 8. I, w I really will say that. I, the Pixel 8, and, you know, since there's an iPhone on my desk right now, and I did talk about it briefly, I am looking forward to the iPhone 15. USB-C for the iPhone, potentially smaller phone for the, the Pixel 8. Um, USB-C is, you know, it's on everything that's in front of me right now. And, and you remember, what's in front of you? All right, so going from left to right, I got a Sony vlogging camera, which is right here. I got my Sony XM, whatever, whatever, Bluetooth headphones, which you charge via USB-C. Of course, my Pixel 7, my MacBook Pro, which I'm talking to you on right here, uh, my Galaxy S23. I have to skip over the iPhone, uh, then the Zen Phone 9. I have a Dell Precision right there. So, so yeah, it's just, and you know, and I'm just going with it on my desk right now. But, yeah, USB-C, we just hit 36 minutes, so I think something's going to happen sometime soon. Um, so, yeah, it just makes sense. And, yeah, I'm... I felt the same way that John Prosser does for a while that, yeah, it sucks that the government is forcing Apple to do it. I mean, yeah, it would have been nice for them just to do it on their own accord, considering even their all of their other products <laughs> use USB-C. But yeah, this little lightning phone, and I got one little lightning cable dangling over there. I got one lightning cable up, oh, and am I going to stop the record? I think I stopped the record. Yeah, but okay, so 30 minutes in, it didn't even finish. I'm not even exactly sure why I stopped it. I think I, did I pause it? Yeah, wait, did I ever finish installing that update? <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I did, or maybe there's a second video. Yeah, let me, let me look to see if there's a second video in here, because I might have resumed the recording when I, when I, don't do that. Um, let me handle storage. Camera. Okay, but that's not where screen recordings are. Where are screen recordings? Recordings? No. Okay. Um, I don't remember where screen recordings are. So, let me come down here come on come on safari yeah let's do that over here screen recordings location in fact I, I do remember that night libraries movies okay it was movies in the yeah uh Nope, only got one in there. So it looks like I started it, yep, and then didn't finish it. But yeah, let me make sure that it actually updated then, because I, I thought. Uh, system update. Okay, so yeah, it's running the August update. So yeah, I don't remember why I didn't finish recording it, and I don't remember exactly how long it took, but you can see already that we're 30 minutes into recording just the pixel portion whereas the galaxy portion only took six minutes so they need to get their, their their stuff together they said they were going to what's happening and I, I feel like we see what this solution is make it so i can't use the phone for a few minutes and then the, the process is significantly faster and then i can go on about my business <laughs> okay all right so 39 minutes into this i think it's time to call it quits and that'll be that all right I will talk to you later.